Okay, my friends, this is Elon Musk wants to give away $100 million to whoever can create a way to recapture carbon, put it back together after you burn it. Everybody knows about carbon dioxide, and they call it a greenhouse gas, and they say it blankets the surface of the earth, creating heat to be held under this blanket. Let's think about that for a minute, because this is not right, Elon. I'm telling you, bro, that you, this is, they're going the whole wrong route. Combustion is combustion. I don't care what you're burning. Okay, my friends, this is going to be a, a lot of fun, I, for me anyway. <laughs> now, if whether you're going to get enjoy this, I don't know. But I have, obviously, if you've been following me, understand I have the electron flood theory, which replaces the Bohr model of the nucleus with this model, which is electron flood, which means that every particle in the nucleus is an electron, not a proton, not a nuclear, neutron, nothing to do with that. Every proton is 1837 dipole electrons, and a dipole means it has a positive and a negative. The positive, however, happens to never have been seen before. It's dark matter. It's a muon. I mean, they've seen it. CERN has seen this from collisions they've had, but they never realized it was attached to the electron. And it is literally dark matter. And it is the muon. This is the electron. Together, back to back, they make a photon, which is a fairly neutral particle. It does not attach normally when it hits things. It bounces off, and you see it as light. Now, this is a different story. When these are by themselves inject into the earth or into you or into a copper wire, they are on their own, and they want to incorporate into something. When they hit, they burn, they expand water water vaporizes 1600 times bigger than it was that's why you explode when you get electrocuted now when these concuss they form showers of electrons they call them electron showers i'm serious and then the dark matter ball goes just goes by itself it never changes and that's the muon now we're going to get in as deep as anybody has ever been and deeper than nasa is right now into space what these particles are, how they react, and what they are literally made of. Their particles, they saturate the entire universe. Every luminous body is sending out literally particles. And the particles are either these, or these, or accumulations of these into molecules. These are el uh, uh, electrons, these are photons of light, these are particles of dust and debris. Now, we're going to look at this in some extreme detail. I mean as details as it gets. We're going to look at the um, Van Allen belts. We're going to look at the Schumann resonance frequencies. We're going to look at the push to shove between every layer of our atmosphere. We're going to look at what is being emitted from the sun, why the sun has an extreme solar corona. Do you know the sun's temperature is only 6,000 degrees on the surface? It's millions out here. It does not get hotter out here than it is here. How did it get hotter out here? The reason is these particles are scrubbing through space and, and that is what's heating it up. Same as our ionosphere, magnetosphere, Van Allen belts, Schumann re resonance, a whole thing fully explained with electron flood theory. Alright, the rays of sun coming at us are impacting with our atmosphere that's scrubbing against them. So it's creating a magnetic generator effect on the Earth, creating particles flowing into the Earth, which are flowing as heat, just like this. And he explains it very nicely. When this magnet comes in here, it's coming in with just like it would be coming in magnetic particles towards our Earth. This has a whole batch of magnetic particles around it, just like sunlight coming against our Earth, which our Earth now has a field of electrons around it that's scrubbing against the particles coming in, just like this coming in. So we are going to be scrubbing around these particles coming at us, just like we are 
our Earth is scrubbing around the particles coming at us, and our interface is out here. The interface will be right here. Watch this. Examples. The magnet's momentum is slowed by opposing magnetic fields generated by the flow of electrons in the copper. And since the electrical energy isn't being collected by a circuit for any useful purpose, it dissipates into the lump of copper as heat. Did you hear that? We didn't collect them. They're flowing here. And it's going to be here. It's going to hit here as heat, just like it does on our Earth. What he's and now the more particles you have here, we're scrubbing through them. So the more particles that we have here opposing this, the more heat we're going to create on our Earth. And it has nothing to do with gases shielding the leaving particles. No, that's not, that's not not it. It's that the, the, the particles we're emitting here are expanded billions of, well, you know what I'm saying. They're thousands of times bigger than they were when they were all combined together in a glob of coal. Once you burn that, yes, you got carbon dioxide, 100% certain. It's hydrocarbons. However, the, the problem is, it's not that they're blanketing now the surface so that nothing can penetrate out of them. The thing is, they've puffed up the surface like this. That's the problem. All right? I hope you understand that. If, there's, if somebody doesn't understand it, get a hold of me and I'll try to make it more clear. But I, I don't think I can. It's... Uh, we're just blowing up like a balloon, and the more we blow up like this against the surface that is not going to move, this surface coming at us is not going to just go out in space and say, all right, we'll leave. No, hell no. It's coming, and it's staying and pushing hard as it can, and we're pushing back harder and harder every day because it'll be burning more and more and blowing up like a balloon. We're eating too much of the earth itself. Literally, it's true. All right, Elon, here's the story. Muons are the black balls I'm about to show you. Electron showers create electron showers, big white splashes. Now, we did this research with a Venturi just using regular light. This is absolutely passive. That's a red pulse laser. What this is is a particle way back here creating a magnetic field in front of it. So that's your wave and that's your particle. Once we approach the Venturi, which is down here in a venturi, if I'm sure you know what that is. It pulled the particle out of the wave, and the wave, it concussed here, and actually showed itself as a dipole. You see it? Plus and a minus. Back to back, they turn into um, a photons. A single one of those, like this, would be an electron back to back like that is a photon. When it concusses, these will bounce. If this concusses, it is devastating. It, it, it just it wants to attach to somebody else. This has already got one attached, so it's fairly neutral. This is not neutral. Now, light is nothing more than these particles, and when they concuss at an extreme violent reaction like this, they actually separate the charges. Now, you, you have the right idea with electricity inside of its own operating realm. See, there's the dark and the, the white, which I just showed you. That, that, that was before, as you saw, just like that. Now they separated. Now, this area here is raw energy. I think this is thousands of times more powerful. And I believe, well, as I looked at some of these primary particles, I think they come in here at megavolts, and they end up here at gigavolts. Now, that's a big increase in, in energy, and this is passive. Did nothing whatsoever other than have a, a venture over here. Anyway, my point is, is it's not going to help you to... Uh, let me just show you something else here. I know I get carried away. The, the, the green is the same. So we could take every colored light, we could take every kind of um, way we can energize uh, or focus light, let's say, from natural sources, and then turn it into that raw energy. I believe, which is a separation of charges. I don't know what you can do with it yet. <laughs> I I, have, I can't do anything with it, but I, I can tell you that there is, you're on the right track with the electric. 
if you can keep the, the push to shove internalized, but once you just combust something and you turn all of the particles that are all locked in like this and everybody goes on their own way, it just, and that's what we do. Now we're pressurizing the first layer of atmosphere. And there is layers of atmosphere, they know that. You take an atomic bomb, shoot it off, you see the first layer go white, then the next layer go white, and the next, and those are push to shove layers. The electrons trying to get down, pushing them back, trying to get down, pushing them back, trying to, and in between each layer is the safe zone, just like it is in space. I'm sure you know this. There's an area where your satellites and everything will get fried, and then there's a safe zone, which is the push to shove dark matter zone, and then there's another layer of electrons up here. So you got electrons on layer, up a layer or up here. These are influencing these, these are influencing those, and in between you have a safe zone. All right. I have electron flow theory that says there is nothing that exists that is not an electron. And they come in batches of them, and they are dipoles. Dark matter is what they look for as a muon. It is attached to the electron. I have shown it. I think I showed it today. And they separate. I showed that. 1837 of these, or it could be half of that number, but it's, it, it depends on how much they weigh, and I can't really be certain of that. But I'm going to say 1837 of these particles in a ball is a proton. Now, we all know that an electrons, there's going to be one of these. It's the same as the one that's in the core. So anything can make anything at some point. That's why they say called nuclear decay, um, isotopes, half-lives, things. It's just the particles come and go. And they're only little bits and pieces. They know that a neutron is only one electron bigger than a proton. That's because they're all made out of electrons. One goes away or one comes and it turns from a proton into a neutron, from a neutron into a proton. Now, the key here is that there is nothing that is not an electron. So, we know electrons push other electrons away. It's just as a fact. So nothing doesn't push anything. Everything pushes everything away. It's the Casimir effect. Now, we are spinning our Casimir effect electrons against the Casimir effect electrons that are in space, all not minus particles, all minus particles. Scrub! What does that do? It forces those electrons in. What do they do? They charge our, our outer layer, then they discharge. That's called lightning. They charge the next layer, they discharge. That's the Schumann resonance. Charge, discharge, charge, discharge, charge, and it hits the ground. I think it's 50 times a second around the world because these particles are being forced into these particles. Simple as that. I was worried that you could not get these particles out ever. But I realize now, I think these particles are the food for the Earth because these are what they call um, oxygen, uh, reactive oxygen species. And they'll be, uh, you, can, you can make molecules from these, I believe. I believe this is literally what the Earth eats. I know, we, that's a whole other issue, but I was worried that we could never get rid of these extra electrons. And now I believe these extra electrons are being used as energy on Earth and to construct things on Earth because they are nothing more than, than crystal particles. And there's a guy talking about this right now. Uh, 